Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, heating systems, namely forced hot air. Uh, in my case here, this is an oil-fired furnace that drives the forced hot air system. Uh, you may also have a boiler, which uh, typically will run um, radiators, you know, usually driven um, with uh, water, water-based systems. So in my case, this is air. Um, the way this works is, well, let's pop the hood and show you. A forced hot air system uses, as its name implies, air to heat the home. This is an oil-fired furnace, so we have an oil tank, and this fuel line will feed oil into the burner assembly. Uh, this is just a, um, this is a shutoff and a bleeder valve, so you can bleed the air out of the line during maintenance. The burner assembly will pump the oil into the burn chamber through a nozzle. So think like a, um, an aerosol can. When you spray it, you get a fine mist. That nozzle uh, aerosolizes the oil and makes it easy to burn because it's very small particles that you get a lot more efficiency. Uh, this is a spark generation system. There's a couple of electrodes that will generate sparks that will ignite the oil in the burn chamber. That gives you your flame. The flame heats the burn chamber the air will pass around that burn chamber, gets heated, and then fed up into the, system, the rest of the system. We also have a, in my case, there's a fan control box and a relay system with a transformer for local power for the uh, thermostat. And this will control power to the burner and the blower motor. So if we follow our path here, the air is pulled into the system through these registers. It comes down through the air return, through a filter into the blower area. Notice here the squirrel cage blower with a motor, and that will push the air up into the, past the burn chamber, and eventually up into the vent system where it will come out of these registers you can see here. Now this system also has central air, so Inside this section is an evaporator, and that, like a radiator of a car, has all these little channels, and that gives you lots of surface area to, in this case, cool the air. So this whole system is a double purpose. It can heat the air, or it can cool the air. Exhaust gases come out and flow out into the chimney. Now, right now, its oil pump is running, it's pumping the oil in, creating a flame. Under here is the blower. Right now, it's just started, so uh, it's heating up the chamber. Once it gets hot enough, it will turn on the blower and start pumping hot air into the house. I mentioned before the importance of maintenance on these systems. Well, one of the things that you need to maintain is the air filter. In my case, this air filter is right here. A few days ago, I noticed the thermostat had called for heat. I heard the relay click in my particular thermostat. Uh, I heard the burner turn on. Then I heard the burner turn off after a few minutes. I noticed though that the thermostat was still calling for heat. See this little flame icon right here? It was still calling for heat, but the burner had turned off. That alerted me that there was a problem. So after a couple seconds of processing, I'm like, who's an idiot? I had been so busy with my schedule and everything, I completely forgot to do this one very important maintenance step, which is to replace the filter. Take a look at this here. We have this clear area and this cloudy area. Well, that cloudy area is where the air was trying to pass through. This filter had gotten so clogged, we didn't have enough airflow. So what happened is with the reduced airflow, we couldn't get enough air past the heat chamber. So it started to overheat and the system shut itself down as a safety measure. 
So, you know, ignorance on my part, lack of proper maintenance, at least the safety system kicked in. So, what do you do to change these filters? Very easy. In my case, if you could see the end of it right here, unfortunately, the way this is designed, you can't really reach it that easily. So, I just take a screwdriver, and just get in there, and just kind of ease it out. Pull it out. And one thing to note on these, when you do install a new filter, there's usually a spot to write an install date. Do that, and even if there isn't, take a Sharpie or something like that and put a date on there when you put it in. Also note, there's typically an airflow indicator. So make sure you install it in the right direction. So how do you know what direction it is? You may have a note that was written on the uh, duct or it's typically before the blower. So your duct is gonna come in and your blower's right here. So the arrow is going to go that way. So line up the arrow. And you, just, you can just slide it in. Done. Very simple, very quick, but very important. So make sure you change your filter on a regular basis if you have a forced hot air system. I find in the dead of winter and in the heat of the summer where the heat or the air conditioning are running quite often, I uh, usually have to replace the filter probably about once a month. Uh, when you're in the more mild times, you know, spring, fall, probably get away with a month and a half, two months, uh, depending on how often the system has to run. So everyone's system is a little different. Your air quality in your home might be a little different. So it's going to determine how quickly that filter gets dirty. So establish a schedule and go with it, but make sure you do it. Um, there is when actually when we bought the house it actually had a reusable filter uh, so this one here you can just take it and you can wash it so these here have a complex matrix of material to be able to catch the dirt the company that services our furnace recommended against those because they tend to be a little bit more obstructive for the airflow and not all furnaces will play nice with it so um, in my case i just bought packs of the uh paper filters. I'll put a link to where I've gotten these here uh, for my furnace. They seem to be a reasonable price. You, know, you could set them up on like auto ship, get them, you know, a pack of 12 every 12 months. Uh, but that way you, you know you've always got a supply of them. I do want to mention one other thing. So let's take a step outside. Well, two other things that I wanted to note is first, make sure you always know where your emergency shutoff switches are. If it malfunctions uh, or just even when you have to shut it down to do service on it, you want to hit that switch, kills power to the furnace, and that way you know that it will be safe to work on. Or if something is going wrong, like it's you know puffing smoke or something like that, you can kill power to it right away. Uh, the other thing is you know, I did I do have a fire extinguisher handy clear close by, just in case, never know, doesn't hurt. Uh, the other thing is note that I don't have this door shut all the way. This is an older house, it's from the 60s. They did not put any venting system in for the furnace room. Oil burning and gas burning appliances are producing fire. Fire requires oxygen. It's gonna pull that from the local air. It could create a low pressure as it burns because it's also trying to pump that, those fumes out through the chimney. If it cannot get enough fresh air, you could generate a negative pressure, which is bad on many levels. One, it won't burn as efficient, but it can also cause a buildup of carbon monoxide. And as we know, that is an odorless, colorless, tasteless, deadly gas. A lot of people die every year from carbon monoxide poisoning. So make sure that your system is vented. Because this house doesn't have a dedicated vent in the furnace room, um, I've seen them, they kind of look like a backwards version of a dryer vent. It allows air to come in rather than have it blow out from the dryer. What I do is I keep this door partially open so that way it allows fresh air to get in to feed the furnace. I recently learned of this requirement, you know, as you guys, I'm constantly you know, looking things up and learning new things. And I was like, ooh, I didn't know that. So. I need to dig into it a little further, see if it's a, a code requirement. If it is, I want to get it done so that way I know that we're uh, the house is, is more code compliant.
But I want to just let you know, you know, if you do have uh, an oil burning or a gas burning system that is in an enclosed area, make sure that it has some sort of venting system, whether it's uh, leaving a door open or having a door that has the louvers on it. Make sure that it has a way to breathe. That's right, so I hope you learned something today about forced hot air systems and the maintenance that's needed for them. Uh, and also, I know one thing I learned from this is to put a note in my calendar to remind me when it's time to change the filter. Because, you know, this is down in the utility room. I don't come in here all the time. And it's easy to be out of sight, out of mind. So I'm going to put a note in the calendar so I remember from now on. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. See you later.